Hey guys, Jeeps here, and welcome back to Tribes Ascend! Today, if you haven't guessed already, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at everyone, and I do mean everyone this time's, favorite medium offensive class, the Raider. Now, like I said, the Raider is mostly an offensive class. This does not mean they can't do defense, however. In fact, this being extraordinarily good at everything edge that they have might be their one flaw. However, we will get to that later on in the video. I know that statement sounded strange, but I'll get to it in a little bit. So, I think it's time to take a rundown on what this class has and does. Now, the Raider tends to be primarily armed with explosive weaponry designed for disrupting base defenses, and then secondary weapons, which makes them very, very good mid-air duelists. As, namely, they get some really good SMGs. Now, belt item-wise, they get a pretty good damage grenade in the cluster, so and then some really cool utility between their two types of EMP grenades, one being the Accelerate Update variant, and the Whiteout Grenade, which blinds people. These are very, 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 very good. And then, for packs, this is where some of the other utility of this class comes. They get a Shield Pack, lets them take less damage, because it goes on their energy, and the Jammer Pack, which works like a Sentinel's Drop Jammer, except on a class. So, revealing cloaked guys, making you unable to target on HUDs, making you turrets not being able to target you, all that good stuff. So let's take a little bit more of an in-depth look, shall we? Let's hop back to primary weapons. Bada-bing, bada-boom, you start out with the Arcs Buster. This is a three-shot sticky grenade launcher, kind of like the Jackal. Well, the Jackal's actually kind of like this, if you're used to playing an Infiltrator. Minus the Detonator with higher damage. Likewise, you also have the Dust Devil. This is the Accelerate variant on this. If you'd like, you can click the annotation I've just put on the screen for you guys. This will top you over to the Accelerate Spotlight video. Actually, it'll open it in a new window, so you don't, you don't lose any progress here. And you can see them compared to more detail. We will not really be going into that much detail on them here. There's already a video which takes care of that. So, what does the Arcs Buster do? Like I said, it is a three-shot sticky grenade launcher, and it is very, very good for clearing stance. Now, this thing does 600 damage on a direct hit, with the splash being around 300. Being it is a grenade-type weapon, the splash is merely halved if it is not a direct or very, very near hit. Now, against generators, it does 750 damage, but against base assets, it only does 576. It has a 0.75 second fuse before the grenades detonate, holds three shots in a clip, like I said, and before and after fully upgrading, it goes between 30 and 42 total ammo capacity is a very, very nice little weapon. Let's hop over. Let's see what it actually looks like, shall we? Now, secondly, and I believe this actually at one point was the primary weapon, and I don't mean back in beta when the classes are different. I swear this was originally the primary raider weapon after they consolidated class, but that's neither here nor there. We have the grenade launcher, the most boring named weapon in this freaking game. But who cares? It's still great. It's a grenade launcher. Who doesn't love a grenade launcher? Now, this does 550 damage on a direct hit, which means its splash goes down to 275 if you are out of the range of doing the max damage. Against a generator, it does 687, so less than the arcs. However, against other base assets, it does a whopping 825, making this thing fantastic for taking out turrets and the radar, and everyone knows getting that radar down is awesome. You love making your enemies harder to see. Or, well, you love your enemies making it harder to see you. You know what I'm trying to say here! Now, it is a one and a half second fuse time on these grenades, which are not sticky. They bounce, but after that one and a half second fuse time, they don't detonate immediately if they're still in the air. This is when they will turn it into exploding on impact. Likewise, if they hit an enemy, no, regardless of if the fuse has passed or not, they will immediately detonate. Now, the starting magazine size for this is four shots. However, it is upgraded to five shots, which is pretty nice. And then starting, it'll have 34 ammo, all the way up to 51, including the two increases of eight, plus the one more you will get from increasing the clip size. This makes it a very, very versatile when you can't get to an inventory station weapon. It just holds a lot of ammo. I would also say it is the better overall disruption weapon, as it is a bit longer range. It's easier to get the arcs with. It arcs kind of like a mortar. It has the same kind of crosshair. And it does a bigger overall explosion radius to the arcs buster. However, I would give the Arcs Buster the edge when you're just doing indoors combat. Three 
Third, but certainly not least of all, we have the infamous Plasma Gun. This thing does 500 damage on a direct hit, and actually, you can argue could be factored into having a damage per second here of about 714 damage per second if you're a real good shot. Now, on the splash, it does between 400 and 200 damage, as always, depending on how far away. It is not a grenade-type weapon, so it is not as strict a damage cutoff for the splash. It is more of a range. Now, against a generator, it does 625, and against assets, it does measly 400. This weapon's a bit controversial in that, A, it has a gigantic projectile hitbox. This is... Really, the strength of the gun, however. Gigantic projectile hitbox, despite having a very, very short range, I guess you could say. It explodes after three seconds of flight and doesn't move especially quickly, but this projectile hitbox means it is very, very easy to get mid-airs with this thing in direct hits. To contrast this with a spin fuser or a thumper or something like that, using the in-game measurement they gave in recent patch notes, spin fusers and thumpers and things like that have a projectile hitbox of 10. Again, I have no idea what the units are. Whereas the Plasma Gun has 35, so more than tripled projectile size. This thing is designed for getting mid-airs. Now, what also makes this weapon controversial is, frankly, it's really bad at doing what the Raider's quite good at, which is, say, disrupting defensives. The blast radius on the actual blast, sorry, that's kind of weird to say, is pretty small, especially compared to the arcs, the Dust Devil, or the Grenade Launcher. This compared to all, compared to all of them. But it's really, really good at just kind of deathmatch, DMing people. So, a bit of a controversial weapon, also because it makes it really step on the toes of the soldier, because arguably it's better than a spin fuser. Again, if you're a really good shot, it just is, because it's easier to get those good shots with it. And then you have much better secondary weapon options in terms of just overall dueling capability. So, a bit of a controversial weapon here, especially since it doesn't really fit with the Raider. That said, doesn't mean we're not gonna take a quick look at it. So let's hop in game, shall we? Alright, now the secondary weapons. The Raider has a fine collection of SMGs, one of which is just a variant of the NJ-4, but that is beside the point. We will actually cover this one a bit more in depth here, because I feel it is worth more worthwhile looking at the damage per second comparisons of all three in this case. Now, starting off, you have the NJ-4 SMG. This is a very fast-firing, moderate damage SMG. It does 75 to 52 based on Fallout damage per shot, giving it an overall DPS of 714 to around 495 damage per second. So, pretty good. Pretty damn good, I'd say. The magazine ranges between 24 and 28, depending on if you have it upgraded, and its overall ammo capacity starts at 180, but goes all the way up to 276. So, you got a pretty good, pretty good stock of ammo on you. Now, it fires a shot every 0.105 seconds. So, very, very fast firing, like I've said before. Very good gun in general. This is a perfectly capable SMG. Arguably, I'd say it's better than the Soldier's Assault Rifle. Gas Rifle has kind of balanced that out a little bit, though. Again, kind of why the Raider is considered to be the better medium class here. Now, we've also got the wonderful NJ5SB SMG. I've gotten a lot of hate for hating on this weapon before, and I still feel I've got some good reason for it. Now, don't get me wrong, I think this weapon is fantastic, and that's why I kind of hate it, is it is, by the numbers, the best SMG the Raider has. Now, I'm gonna show you why. First of all, it's already the most accurate gun. It's scoped, it has a big projectile size, and it is very slow firing, but I don't know, I find the rhythm very easy to make sure you're landing every shot with. Now, it does 140 damage before damage fallout, and has a pretty good range before damage fallout, and goes all the way down to 98, which is still pretty good. Yeah, it's a almost, it's a, what, 42 damage difference? But it's still pretty high. This gives it an overall damage per second of 733 to 513. So if you're landing every shot, that's pretty frightening. Now, you might be saying, well, that's not that much higher than the NJ-4 but it's pretty easy to, you don't have to be landing as many shots here. Yeah, the chaining is less, but with the overall accuracy, the better range and everything, it just is more powerful than the NJ-4. Straight up more powerful. And it's 
definitely better at finishing off someone who's already hurt, because you might only need one hit then. And it's longer range, and more accurate, and you get where I'm coming from here. It's a very, very, very good gun. Now, the magazine size is the same as the NJ4. You've got 24 to 28, but you won't be burning through that as fast because you're firing slower. Kind of a plus in a lot of ways. Now, its ammo is also 172 to 268. Again, based on upgrades, you know how this works. Again, very good. Little higher... Well, no, sorry. Lower in every respect in the NJ4. Don't ignore that. Now, it fires a shot every 0.191 seconds, so almost getting on to double the delay of the NJ4. Not quite, but getting up there. Now lastly, we have the Desert NJ4, which, again, is actually more powerful than the regular NJ4 in the long run. It does less damage per shot, roughly 5 less damage per shot, in fact. It does 70 to 49, depending on Fallout, giving it a DPS of 729 to 510, which is a little bit higher than the regular NJ4. Magazine size, exactly the same. Ammo, roughly about the same once again. Yeah. A little lower. And then, the interval. This is why it does such high DPS. It shoots a round every 0 .096 seconds. That is ludicrously fast. Holy crap. With that lowered, yeah, it does lower damage shot, but this thing is a chaining monster. Just the sheer speed. It really just means that the NJ4 is the worst option here. Not to say it is a bad gun, by any means. It's still a fantastic SMG. But if you want a fast-firing chaining weapon, the Desert NJ4 is the better option. And if you want something just with crazy accuracy, high damage per shot, and still the highest damage per second, so if you're a good chainer, if that really matters, of the three, the NJ5 is also better. In fact, it's better than either of them. So yeah, starting gun, definitely the weakest. Not, again, by significant margins, but still the weakest. Now, hopping over to our belt items, the Raider has a lot of pretty cool options here. Now, again, you get your EMP and your EMP XL. These are, this is the Accelerate variant of the basic EMP. Does probably what you think. It has a long, larger, larger radius, smaller damage, blah, blah, blah. Again, this has been covered in the Accelerate video. Hop over there if you want to see that in more detail. So we'll just go back to the EMP. What does this do? Well, it doesn't do a lot of damage. Let's start off with that. It does 600 damage. 300 on the minimum damage because, again, grenade. That's how the fallout works for these things. But it drains your energy. Or more specifically, it drains whoever's energy is getting hit by it. Now, from what I have read, it's meant to draw you a 70% energy drain, which then gets buffed to 90 by 20%. However, in practice, I don't know if maybe I'm just misunderstanding how they mean this energy drain, but it seems to pretty much drain everything. Before I had the 20% upgrade, I tested this out on myself, and it just drained all 110 energy I had. All of it. So, really, really good for keeping someone from running away. If you can get good at timing these, you can just neuter someone's ability to escape you. Which then means your explosive weapons are a whole lot more effective, because they're not jetting away from you anytime soon. Very nice utility weapon. Now, previously, this actually used to do quite a lot of damage and have a much lower energy drain. In fact, it did, I think, 1300 damage. Then did less, but still some energy drain. I'm pretty happy they reworked these to be more of a utility grenade than a pure damage grenade, because frankly, when they were a damage grenade with the utility built in, they were the best damage grenade. Which then made the fact that they later gave Raiders a pure damage grenade very, very stupid, because it was worse than the EMP grenades. Now, next, we have the Whiteout Grenade. These are kind of awesome. They don't look like that either. There they are. That's the Whiteout Grenade. These do negligible damage. They do like 50, maybe. Down to 25, I imagine, and on half. The damage is unimportant, however. What is important is they blind people. So, you hit someone with a Whiteout Grenade, their screen whites out. It's just pure white. They can't see Jack. If you get these fully upgraded, it makes the duration last longer. These are so fun. I'm sorry, they're mean, but they're fun, and they're going to be frustrating as hell to be hit by. Not being able to see means a dangerous class like the Raider will probably eat you for breakfast. These are even better if you're working together with someone else because, well, it's more people taking advantage of the fact that that Doombringer or whatever you're shooting at now can't see where you are. And you're not that likely to hit someone when you're spamming your projectile gun around. Pretty cool weapon. Now, this brings us lastly to the Cluster Grenade. This is the aforementioned Pure Damage Grenade. 
Now, this thing does 400 damage on the initial explosion and then shoots out five more smaller grenades, which do 425 damage per explosion. So, pretty, really, ridiculously high total damage if somehow you hit someone with all of the blasts. Now, these are obviously halved if you're at the minimum damage range, so 200 and 213, 212, depending on how they round it, if they round it, I don't know. Damage on the clusters and the big grenade. Inverted, respectively. You know what I mean. This thing is fantastic for clearing flag stands. It works kind of like the Merv launcher for the Juggernaut, in that you throw it out and then it bursts into these little grenades. Great clearing weapon, high damage, and no longer directly competing with the EMP grenade, which means it's worth using. Because, again, the EMP grenade used to just be the better damage grenade, too, which was a dumb decision, and I'm glad they have fixed that. It's a fun toy. It's definitely fun to mess around with. Good damage, good fun, nice fun little scattery mechanic. It's a really cool, unique damage grenade that really suits what the Raider is designed to do, which is disrupting the enemy defense players, getting them off the flag stand, hitting a large area. Very good. Very, very, very good. And now, finally, we have the two unique to this class things. Not that those weapons weren't unique to this class, because they all are. But the packs are very, very awesome. First off, we have the shield pack, which, I'm also lying, isn't strictly unique to this class, because the brute has a slightly better one. That's beside the point. No one cares about brutes anyway. They just throw fractals, right? Yeah, am I right? Ah, well, the shield pack, what does it do? Well, it is a shield. Duh, bet you saw that one coming. Now, this means when it's active, you take damage on your energy reserve instead of your health. This is really, really cool, but also very much limits your mobility. This is a big problem. Well, not really a problem. This is how they're balanced, the two Raider packs in general. They're both very energy intensive, especially the shield pack. So while there's, for one thing, a constant energy drain on them, anytime you get hit, you lose more energy. But this will save your ass sometimes. Now, in total, the shield pack will block from a full energy reserve, barring, of course, you know, having ultra capacitors on or anything like that. From your full 110 energy reserve, this will block about 700 damage. So, 6.3, 6.4 damage on average per point of energy is absorbed. That doesn't sound like a whole lot, but think about how much that can save you. This means that from full energy, you could take a Fusion Mortar Deluxe to the face and live. You'll still be pretty badly hurt, don't get me wrong, but you'll live. You'll, again, 600 life left, but no other class that is not a heavy can say that. That's fantastic. Don't even get me started about how effective it then becomes against machine guns and things like that. Really, really cool. Really, really great. Not quite as powerful as the Brute's heavy shield pack, but again, it probably shouldn't be, because that one's a heavy shield pack. That's kind of how those words tend to work. Nextly, we have the jammer pack. This is an interesting one. This works like the Sentinel's drop jammer does. So it makes you all staticky and blurry looking. There's no longer be any HUD markers above you. Turrets can't target you, be they base turrets or lovely, lovely technician turrets. And things like the saber launcher can't target you too, so I guess that's kind of cool. And, best of all, it decloaks infiltrators that are near you. So, haha, ha, take that, your jackal-wielding jackal person, man, guy. Yeah, I can see you now, which means you're probably dead. Now, this is a really, really fun pack to use when going in as a team, because much like the drop jammer, it does apply to everyone near you. Which just means you're a little harder to spot from a distance. Now, the blurring and staticky effect actually means you're probably a little easier to see visually. But no HUD marker still helps you get close sooner. Plus, it means you don't have to worry about a base turret shooting you or the technician turret. It also makes it fantastic for going and killing base turrets because you can stand right in front of one. They can't do anything to you. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? It is pretty awesome, I know. I love these things. They have an energy drain, but other than that, pretty great. If you're not so great at dealing with the shield pack, the jammer pack, which unfortunately you do have to unlock, might be the safer option. It lets you do some kind of cool tricks. 
makes you kind of be able to act sort of like an infiltrator, because at least you can get past the base defenses and in there without anyone really noticing you. Really good for sneaking a long way around, where people might not be able to see you at a distance. Fantastic little pack. I love it. I love the Jammer pack. Now, perks-wise, you get a lot of options as the Raider, lots of which are very good. You're starting to see that just as a theme of this class. Lots of things are very good. Now, for primary, Ultra Capacitor is actually a fantastic choice just because of how energy-hungry this class can be. It's definitely, definitely a good option, but probably not the best. Due to how vicious and bloodthirsty this class can be, Bounty Hunter is a fantastic choice. You're likely going to be getting a lot of kills because you're a very focused on killing class. Extra credits is always good. You can't really argue with that. Plus, your belt item's pretty decent. So the extra 100 for belt kills, also quite nice. Likewise, looter can be very good because this will keep you supplied with ammo. You will burn through your SMG ammo, again, maybe unless you're using the NJ5B, really fast. Especially if you're using the Desert NJ4. That'll be gone in seconds. And the Arcs and the Grenade Launcher, they have a decent ammo reserve, but again, you can burn through them pretty quickly because they're kind of spam weapons. You're going to be spending a lot of time spamming these at defensive positions and stands and stuff to keep people disrupted. Being able to get that little bit of extra ammo from ammo drops, invaluable in this case. Plus, you can get the extra grenade ammo for your really awesome grenades. Fantastic choice. Stealthy could arguably be a good chance and choice now with how much it has been buffed. However, the Raider is still largely a very in-your-face class, at which point it doesn't matter so much. Plus, if you're worried about being spotted from a distance, you have the Jammer Pack. So, not a bad choice, but probably the worst of the good choices. And, of course, Safety Third is always fun. If you got no better options, just take Safety Third. Everyone loves Safety Third. More grenades, always great. Now for secondary perks, I find it very hard to not take Survivalist here. Why? Same reason as for Infiltrators. This means you can keep running your Shield Pack or your Jammer Pack longer, plus get more health. So this makes it incredible with the Shield Pack, just because it gets you energy and health back, which just doubly increases your survivability. Jammer Pack, a little less useful, but still a very good option. It's not quite as energy heavy of a pack because you don't lose it when you get hit. But again, any energy heavy class is going to love Survivalist when you have it all the way maxed out. Another really good option, and this is for if you're a bit more skilled than, say, me, is go with Potential Energy. Now, why is this? Well, we've already talked before in other episodes of other series on this game that Potential Energy is a great dueling perk. Little is this true more for anyone other... Wow, that sentence made no sense. This is true almost more than anyone else for a class with the Shield Pack, though. Why? Because if you're really, really good at switching between taking hits on your health and on your shield, you can kind of just live forever. Now why is this? Well, if you're about to get hit by an explosion, that's not going to do a whole lot of damage to you. Drop your shield and get some energy back, potential energy. Then bring your shield back up and take those machine gun hits on your shield. And you get the idea. Now arguably this is even better with brutes, but raiders can definitely deal with it too because, well, it's an awesome thing to do. It does take some skill and precision that, frankly, I don't have. So, Use at your own risk. It's not easy to get down the quick switching between. Now, also, Ultra Capacitor 2 can be a decent choice for the same reasons as Ultra Capacitor 1. I don't know if I'd risk taking both of them, frankly, just because there are a lot of good perk options for this class. And, yeah, it's probably the least useful of all of the good ones. Quick Drop, also very good option because you have two very different types of weapons. Being able to switch over to your SMG, which, with the exception of the Plasma Gun, is going to be your dueling weapon of choice very, very quickly, always good. Plus, everyone likes being able to throw their grenades quicker. So, yeah, definitely a good option. And that's probably it for perks. You're not really going to take Mechanic. And Lightweight, I don't even know if Lightweight gets really any use. I don't know. You're not going to be using it as a Raider, though, that's for sure. So don't worry about that. The only other option is maybe, maybe take Egocentric. Why would you take Egocentric? Well, you would take Egocentric if you are really, really bad about EMPing and whiteouting yourself. Max it out, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Really good for EM for uh, whiteouts, because they don't really do any damage anyway. If you're really good at timing them, you can even use them to grenade jump when you have this. You gotta kinda time it right, but that's beside the point. Grenade jumping with whiteouts that don't white you out. Awesome. So that's about it for the Raider, everybody. It is a powerful class. Now, 
I feel I should point out it is very well loved and does have two skin options. These were covered way back in my Raid and Pillage update video, but if you want to see them again, there's the Mercenary skin, which I personally love because it's extremely generic, and for some reason I kind of like dude in generic space armor. It is also not a Halo ripoff. Just get those thoughts out of your head. It's generic space armor ripoff. The helmet is vaguely Halo-ish, but if we're going to be honest, it looks more like 40k guardsman carapace armor that stormtroopers wear. And if you get that reference, you are awesome, and I am high-fiving you right now in my mind. I hope you got that reference, guys. Then, of course, you also have the Griever. This was the premium skin. It's a badass piratey dude who's got scars and a bionic eye and a skull on his shoulder. And doesn't... He likes having his biceps exposed. Cool. I prefer the mercenary. But Griever's a pretty cool skin nonetheless. Now, earlier I mentioned kind of how the Raider being good at everything is its one flaw. Well, that's because it... From a balance perspective, that's its one flaw. This class can now kind of do everything the soldier can do. They've fixed a little bit of this. This was really bad right after Raid and Pillage came out. In which, frankly, the soldier was worse in every way than the Raider. Because the plasma gun was better than all of the soldier's weapons, which then meant the Raider had a good explosive weapon and a great automatic weapon at all times. The soldier could not compare with that. It's a little fixed now. The soldier's found a kind of nice niche. The Raider is still arguably the better class, however. Its only loss over the Soldier is it's less mobile, because it has less energy and less viable disc jumping methods, because it doesn't really have a disc, the plasma gun doesn't really work well for it, and the grenade launcher sure as hell doesn't. So you don't really get the mobility. But you're good at everything else. Look at all the utility you get between your crazy packs, your fantastic grenades. You have significantly better automatic weapons than the assault rifle, and probably than Gast's rifle, too. And your primary weapons are all quite good at what they do, and the plasma gun is pretty much a better spin fuser in a lot of ways. Yeah, I know, it's not exactly the same, but for pure dueling capability, it is arguably the more powerful weapon. Again, in the hands of someone who's any good. So not. But that does not stop it from being a great class. Again, that's maybe almost the problem, is this class is really good. They fixed a bit of this by reducing the power of automatic weapons and tweaking things here and there. They did reduce the shield pack to be a little worse than it used to be. It used to be the same as the heavy shield pack, now it's worse. So that's cool. But again, very, very powerful class. Very, very well-loved class. Hell, even with the sale gone, the steam deal on this thing is fantastic. We, if you want to go back, you can see how much it costs to unlock everything from this class in that video. And even without the sale, it's still a better deal than trying to buy everything with gold. Or unlocking everything, arguably. But that's it for the Raider, friends. This class is great. I highly encourage you to check it out. If you're just picking up the game, this is a very, very good first class to unlock if you're planning on playing offensively. Because it's very, very good. Just very, very good. Even with its default equipment, fantastic offensive class. Better than the soldier, unless you put a lot of work at it on offense. And probably equal to the juggernaut on offense, but with more kind of more specialized. And you have to unlock this one. And it's a medium. And not a heavy. So hey, that'll float your boat, maybe. Who knows? So that's it for now, my friends. As always, like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Leave a comment if you are likely a more experienced raider than I am. And got anything you'd like to talk about here? So that's it. I've been Jeeps. Talk to you guys later.